Hey fanboys, Adam with Beer and Bolters 40K here. Got the Logan Grimnar on Storm Rider. Just want to get a quick open box overview and everything like that. Um, first off, let's talk about the uh, neck beard reaction to this. Everybody was hating on it. I think it looks freaking awesome from the pictures. Very happy about it. I think it's dynamic, some difference. Uh, there's not really many chariots in the 40K universe. I think there's three. Uh, you know what, in, in regards to Viking fluff, Thor had a chariot similar to this that he used to ride on, you know, pulled by some rams. So I'm down with it. I think it looks awesome. I think all those guys who were talking trash about it are going to uh, change their mind. But let's see. Let's open this guy up. So first off, big old base. Can't wait to fill this up with that. So as you guys can see right here, very uh, good looking pieces. Uh, this would be really good to paint um, just off the bat. A lot of different bits. One thing I am a little worried about though is I hate these type of frilly bits for the sprue. They seem to break and snap. And since this is a you know $59 figure or whatever is $49 figure, $52 figure, whatever. Thunderwolves are new. They do look different than uh, previous Thunderwolves. Um, I don't think I see their teeth look a little bit different. And uh, pretty cool. And then the chariots, and I'm seeing one key thing I was interested in in regard to uh, Logan Grimnar. I want to be able to model him to uh, be both on the base and also take him off a of Storm Rider. I'm not buying two of these. Uh, Storm Rider is not something that's available for an upgrade for any other character. So, but I got to make sure I can have Logan Grimnar on and off the base. He'll probably be getting a lot of play on here. So, pretty cool additional shields that are actually, now this is cool, these have the same little bits on here for uh, the Thunderwolf Calvary, so those are actually Storm Shields. Pretty neat. So we got Axum, you know, we have the Markai, the uh, wolf that stalks the stars, and I'm not sure what this one is. But uh, Logan looks pretty awesome. From the bits that I see, I can't wait to put them together. Axe Markai looks awesome. He looks a lot beefier. And uh, I like this uh, wolf pelt thing. So I'm be pretty excited about this. Again, Thunderwolves look cool. And uh, we'll be right back when we go start chopping this guy up and throwing them together and see what we can do with them. Now one thing I've noticed, there is no additional base to put Logan on. So this is being modeled as you put Logan on this and that's about it. So with the uh, help of some magnets, I will be definitely setting this up so I can put this on a regular base. So very cool. All right guys, pretty much it. Can't wait to get out and play with this model. We got a game day tomorrow. I'll probably be doing an all nighter trying to get this guy painted, primed and painted at least the first base coat colors. Uh, Cause I don't play with unpainted models generally speaking. But of course for, you know, the old wolf, the great wolf, whatever you want to call him. Uh, I might have to pull up all nighter and get this guy squared away. All right, guys, so we have Logan all put together with his uh, Thunderwolves on his uh, hover sled, whatever you want to talk about. So pretty easy model to put together, very uh, intuitive. Um, the one thing I would say is kind of difficult is uh, getting the wolves in the place of this guy's very top heavy. And you don't want to glue them this base to here first because if you do that, the weight of him will start to stretch the glue down. So you to make sure you glue him to the base right here before you put the base on. Now me, I threw together some magnets. So 
that'll be easy for uh, to transport it because these guys can just pop off and they can pop back in there and get right into position how I want them to be. Pretty cool. And also the other thing too is I would paint some of this before you finally assembly, assemble it if you're gonna glue it all together because it's very hard to get down there and get to some of the nitty gritties from the angles I measured with my brush to make sure. So let's throw this guy off, take this guy off. And uh, one thing I did too is I outlined each of the rock formations so I can terrain around these and that way I can uh, take this apart for transport if I'm uh, traveling or something like that. So it's just a lot of snag points. Um, I'm afraid that if I throw this guy in a, in a box or something like this, he's just gonna break. And these are not that you know, sturdy. They can snap pretty easy as you guys can see. It's you know, pretty good. I don't have to worry about the magnets. So, and also did magnet Logan as well. The one thing I was kind of disappointed with, I wish that they designed this to fit a full-size base with the stone would, would pop in there somehow. I mean, it's just two, these straps over here that hold it in. You can't do it. I was thinking about even cutting this out and then mounting it, you know, putting this thing apart and mounting Logan there, but he's just too big. So speaking of Logan, now somebody of this quality, I would usually start to paint some bits unassembled. The problem is, is that you have to assemble him before you glue him, unfortunately. There's a part here with getting this hair underneath his, uh, underneath the tooth here, uh, without bending that tooth of that wolf head is very tight. Um, and also there's some other, you know, wolf pelts that go around that are just very, very tight. Same thing with his waist. His waist cannot fit up inside of there. Um, if this top piece is closed, you can't pop it in there. You gotta have that unglued before you put the legs in. So by that time I was like, you know, it might as well just throw on this arm <laughs> because I just wanted to get them together. And that way I can also balance them. I did put in magnets in his feet. It actually took two on, you know, one of the front, one of the back to get it to where I really like it. And I did base him like this already. And he's not quite there with the base. I'm gonna have to move him around a little bit more, move some of this, the terrain because it doesn't look bad, but he just feels like he's got his, his gangster lean on a little bit and I'm not feeling that. So as you guys can see, he's just, I mean, the manager's are strong enough. I don't know why he's not just snap it into place. But uh, I think some of these rocks right here are stopping his foot from getting flush. So there you go, that's better. So he looks better like that. Um, but I'm pretty happy with him. Now, how am I gonna run him? You know, the, the, uh, the chariot is actually pretty good. I mean, it does offer him basically three additional wounds because there's no, every, everything's a glancing hit. And of course, uh, you get to choose, the, the, the controlling player gets to choose how he's going to um, divvy up the hull points or the wounds. So with Logan having four wounds and the chariot having three hull points that always glance, they never penetrate, he's gonna be on the board for a while. Um, and he's got Eternal Warrior as well. So that's pretty awesome. I mean, you gotta watch out for D weapons, of course. That's going to uh, definitely put a, a put him in a bad mood. Now, the one thing I was kind of disappointed about, it, and I'm, I might have to check the rules on this, but I think once the chariot's hull points are done, it's not like he can like you know jump off and be ready to rock and roll. You know, he's he's done. You either take him to the chariot, he's got to stay at the chariot the whole time, or you take him on foot, and of course he's got to stay on foot the whole time. So I don't know. And you know, it's funny. I was thinking about just gluing him in here because, of course, I have my old Logan um, that served me for, you know, I don't know, 10 years or so. Um, and I was going to run him as the, the solo Logan and then run him as the chariot Logan and just glue him in here. But then I was like, you know what, I just want the newer version. So my older Logan is going to become a, a wolf guard with a frost axe and a storm bolter. He'll still go play. He just won't be playing as uh, the old wolf. So really like this kit, guys. Uh, looks pretty good. It was pretty easy to model. Um, our game day for our game club this week, actually everybody played, and I just kind of sat there in the corner and modeled with ma magnets for you know four hours. Uh, but I got everything done. Um, I'll probably have some future videos of me starting to paint this guy. He's the next project that I'm going to work on. I just it's Logan Grimnar. He's like you know one of my favorite characters, um, next to Ragnar. But unfortunately, Ragnar kind of sucks nowadays. Like I said before. And I'm still a big fan of playing with Logan, so I want to get him done as soon as possible so I can bring him to uh, 
to my uh, table and start playing with them. Pretty All right, guys, we're about a year later since I first got my Logan Grimnar, and I gotta say, I still love this model. Really happy with the, how the paint scheme turned out. He's just a commanding presence. And in regards on how he plays on the board, he's actually pretty awesome. I've, I think I've only had him, you know, fall in maybe once in a dozen or so battles. Now, recently, I haven't been playing him that often uh, for whatever reasons. You know, you kind of want to mix up how you play and everything. Uh, but he looks awesome. I really love the feel of him. I actually did get a chance to play him one time without the chariot and uh, turned out pretty well. So there he is on his uh, magnetized base. A little bit, no, uh, well, he's not that wobbly. You got to be careful if you sling him too hard. He will fall off there. He did take a spill one day, no damage or anything. Um, but that did, that did worry me. I uh, really love how the axe turned out. The little yellow in there really brings it together. He's just an awesome looking model. I went for kind of a dark... I look to his armor with some subtle highlights, uh, but really, really feeling him. Like I said before, there was some you know, difficulty in regards to uh, painting him um, because you do have to put him together as far as I'm concerned. There's some bits back there that are kind of hard to see. Uh, prior to, uh, to gluing him together, there's just some tricky um, you know, ways to model him. Uh, but all in all, super happy with him. He's a commanding presence on the board. He's got a very, very good look, and he is a mountain of a man, how he's described in, uh, in the, the books and everything like that. As far as how the rules play for his chariot, you know, being that 12 armor, uh, he's pretty much immune to 5, strength 5 and below, and the fact that he always just takes glancing hits with the 4-up invulnerable, it is a pretty good survivability there. Uh, I do wish that he could join squads of Thunderwolves, um, but he can't. That That is one thing that is kind of upsetting when you throw him on the chariot. He's kind of a solo act. Uh, but he's done very well for me. He's, there's some pretty cool stories involved of him you know, blowing through a wall in a piece of ruin and attacking a uh, uh, hive tyrant. And just as Hammer of Wrath hits, which I scored six on on that you know, round of combat, and the attacks from the wolves actually killed the hive tyrant. That was pretty amazing. So that was you know something for the, the saga books in regards to how badass he is. Uh, the wolves themselves, I, I, I am going to hit them with some matte finisher. I've been meaning to do that for a year now. Uh, wasn't really uh, happy with how shiny they, they looked after I was done all my washes on them. Um, but, you know, all in all, you just kind of get to a project. You're like, yeah, I'll go fix that later. And I actually am going to go back and add the new snow effect to the snow places I have on there. The only other thing that I kind of didn't like is this didn't really turn out as well as I like I kind of wish I had another piece of, you know, rock or something that would cover up the brown there. But all in all, it works. It's a nice place to keep the base, you know, safe. And, and from afar, you really can't perceive that it's there. Um, I could leave it off if I wanted to, but I was happy to, to kind of do that. Uh, but very happy with him. He's a cool-looking model as far as I'm concerned. You know, I still get the uh, Santa Claus comments from the guys in the club every once in a while. But after getting there... Their uh, asses beat with him relentlessly many times. The fact that he took out Dante and a whole squad of his sanguinary guard one time on a charge, uh, yeah, Chris Chris doesn't say ho, ho, ho that often anymore. So very cool stuff. Really like him, and uh, feels very space wolfy to me. All right, guys, that's pretty much it. And uh, you guys might notice this is an edit from an old review on the Beer and Bolters 40K YouTube channel. I'm bringing those videos over the Space Wolf one. So the beer and bolters will only be podcast. And then some of the hobby stuff that we do will be here on the Space Wolf channel. So check out the podcast. Make sure you go check out the uh, the page for the Space Wolf blog. And also, if you're into other nerdy stuff, check out Nerd Rage Radio. Uh, Uncle Skullface and I do a weekly podcast in regards to whatever nerdy stuff. Every once in a while, some 40K comments will get in there. It's mostly just comic book, comic book movies, and other pop culture type stuff. And any anything that you would like if you're you know a nerd like me. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. See you soon. Bye.